It's Voice of Disruption. I'm Ken Rakowski, and on today's show, as I mentioned at the early monologue, we're going to be focusing on the hacker's mindset. How to think differently. You know, the whole idea of being outside the box. Well, we're way beyond the box here because hackers are the ones that really have created some of the things that you use on a daily basis. One of the world's most infamous, most famous hackers is right here. His name is Pablos, and Pablos, um, I believe you're in the Seattle area, and you actually work for a company, your day job, right? I have a job. You have a job. No, you work for a company called Intellectual Ventures. Yeah. Now, what does Intellectual Ventures, or IV, do? So we're trying to figure out how you invest in invention, mm -hmm. right? So if you look at typical funding models for innovation, like venture capital, that doesn't really kick in until you already have a product and you're going to scale a business. Okay. Nobody's funding inventors. And there's like 10 years before a startup when an inventor has to figure out a new technology, figure out what's technically possible, create a new invention, get a patent, you know, try and talk somebody into making a product out of it. There's a lot of work there. And a lot of it's just crazy hair in a garage with a DeLorean. So but it's got some merit before it it's sees the public. The most important part. Without okay. a new invention, without a new technology, you know, there's nothing that's going to change. Now, when I say hacker, people yeah. automatically think behind a keyboard. Yeah. And you're diving into yeah, things. Yeah, that's my whole childhood. <laughs> but that's not what you do. You right. hack everything. Well, where I come from, you know, is, is sort of the early days of computer hackers. Mm -hmm. But... The most valuable thing I've learned from that is just that mindset of how you um, discover what's technically possible by just trying everything and taking things apart and breaking them. Well, not just that. Let's talk about the planet itself. Yeah. I mean, you're hacking things that nobody would perceive to right. be Right, so we take that mindset and then apply it to the biggest problems we can find beyond computer security and those kinds of things. And so we've been lucky to be able to work on all kinds of big problems. So we work on trying to figure out how to solve malaria. We've tried to figure out how to reverse the effects of global warming. We've worked on problems like... Um, hurricanes. Hurricanes. Let's throw that to, one out real quick, okay? Yeah, sure. Hurricanes, you would think they're unstoppable. Whatever right. they are, you're going to... They're massive, have, yeah. They're massive. But you saw a way to say, hey, maybe there is a hackable way to make it a right. less... So uh, we invented it. Yeah, we invented a machine that can suppress hurricanes. And the cool thing <laughs> about it is it's probably the simplest invention we ever came up with. So hurricanes are the way they work. There's heat. You know, the sun shines on the ocean. That heat re irradiates. And it's the heat rising off of the surface of the ocean that fuels hurricanes. So you have to cool down the water. That would be awesome. How do you cool down the water? Right, the you ocean? want to cool down the water, but it turns out everywhere you have this problem, you have hot water on the surface, but you have cold water below. So if you could just stir it up real good, your hurricanes wouldn't be so bad. But the energy sources to pump that water up. It takes a lot of energy, but it turns out everywhere you have this problem, we have a free source of energy, which is waves. Because waves normally are useless energy because they're mechanical energy and they're not near people. By the time you solve those problems, it's so expensive, it's not worth using. But waves are a massive amount of mechanical energy. So our invention is the simplest thing. It's a giant tube. You stick it in the ocean vertically. The top has a little ramp on it, like an artificial beach. So waves crash over it. And the waves push the hot water into the top. That creates hydraulic head that pushes the water down. It mixes with the cold water below. And it brings the surface temperature down just a little bit, one or two degrees, enough to keep your Cat 5 hurricanes down to Cat 4 or Cat 3. That's incredible. It's incredible. But it sounds like that's a and massive easy. undertaking. Well, it's, you know, so the tube is about 80 meters in diameter, but it's made of recycled truck tires and, and trash bag plastic. There's nothing to it. Was that an aha when you got to that point going, yeah, of course, this is simple. Let's Kind of. I mean, our process for inventing is to kind of turn it into a team sport. So we'll get somebody with a problem. In that case, you know, we had uh, some climate guys who understood hurricanes. But we sit those people down. We surround them with a nuclear physicist, a laser expert, a chemist, computer hacker. Collectively, we know the cutting edge in every area in science and technology. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of times at the borders where we get those ideas, right? We had a guy in, the, uh, in that invention session 
named Stephen Salter, who's a um, researcher who's for his, spent his whole career on wave energy. And he, and he invented the Salter duck and a bunch of uh, other inventions for uh, turning waves into, into useful uh, energy. And so just having him in the room, because, you know, we thought this is a guy who knows a lot about, you know, the ocean and using the energy in the ocean. And it just turned out he was in the room. We had different, you know, a bunch of different inventors in the room at the time. So coming up with those ideas is really, you know, possible to do. Because you collaborate. In, you come together. Collaborate. But yeah. everyone's got that hacker mindset in that room. Those are pretty extraordinary people. They are. Yeah. But you fit within that. I, you and I have known each other over a decade. Yeah. Uh, you are the personification of cool. Oh, thanks. Well, because you walk in and, you, one, you almost command authority without <laughs> saying anything because you look at the world differently. Let me explain okay. this, okay? When you walk into a room, you scope things out. Mm. You don't become part of. Mm. You, you mm. do, right? Interesting. And then the other thing is former edu form, formal education. Yeah. You didn't have that, did you? I didn't go to college. And because of that, do you think you created the own, your own constructs of how you absorb knowledge and information? Yeah, I mean, I think it started before that because, you know, I got this computer when I was a kid in, you know, like 1979 or something. Nobody even knew what that was. I had an Apple II and I had a skateboard. And people were very conflicted about which was a bigger waste of time, right? Because nobody knew this computer thing was going to pan out. And so there's nobody to learn from. Nobody around me knew any more than I did. All I could do is try to learn if, and, and play with it and crash it and reboot it and break it and see what happened and figure out what it was good for. And it kind of lights up your imagination. You know, you imagine someday it'll be faster, someday it'll have more memory, someday it'll be useful. And I was trying to convince everyone of this and mostly failing. But the learning style, that process of learning by trial and error and through reverse engineering and, and just breaking stuff, that was so effective. That's what I'm still doing. And that's entrepreneurial. Right. Well, yeah, stuff, because, yeah, because, quick. because fundamentally, you know, if you're a person who's going to learn by reading the directions, you're not going to invent anything new. Nobody has ever invented anything new by reading the directions. Right. We're not going to figure out how to solve hurricanes so by do you reading think, the directions. There are and, none. And I've asked yeah. this with other people. Yeah. How important is a, a college education uh, today? I don't know. You know, for me, it was important not to do that. Right. And, uh, and it's worked out pretty well. But uh, for certain types of things, I mean, you could only learn them in college context. Right. Because there's so much knowledge and so much data that has to be conveyed into a person to make them uh, up to speed. And so I think, you know, there might be certain things you have to go to college to learn. But um, I don't think it's a good place to learn how to learn. Because of the way it's established today. Yeah. Let's face it, most of the knowledge base yeah. is on YouTube somewhere, right? There's so much knowledge <laughs> on YouTube. I mean, it was excruciating for me to learn how to code. It took me so long. I had to figure it out with, you know, it's bare knuckling all the way. Whereas now you can just go on YouTube, go to Code Academy, go on, you know, there's so many crash courses on how to code anyone could learn in a week. Pablos Holman is joining us, and Pablos is considered one of the top hackers. Again, we're not talking about just coding. He is referring to that, but hacking the planet and hacking opportunities. He has shared the st TED stage with some of the biggest speakers also. He travels around the planet talking about the idea of a hacker's mindset and how everything somewhere is broken and can be fixed. Mm. And finding its breakpoints are where the opportunities are. Well, I think yeah, that's certainly how we think about invention, right, is... You know, I'm going to just take everything, break it into a lot of little pieces, but then figure out what I can build from that, right? What, what, you know, what tools does that give me? And that's what, and so my whole life I've tried to learn, you know, I got to get a hold of every computer, every new piece of software. Now it's every new algorithm, every new scientific discovery. I try to internalize that. That's my toolkit. I realized something about you over the last decade. The word no is not really part of the vocabulary, <laughs> but it's not. Okay. If I ask you to do something crazy, right. you generally say, I'm in, I'm game, I just right. got to find time. <laughs> yeah. But that's a unique oh, individual. Oh. I think the world is used to saying no yeah. very quickly. Right. How do you maintain the yes focus? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm cheating by not hanging out with a lot of those people. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I mean, I think there's a... You know, 
I've heard it described as, you know, you, you, you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Mm -hmm. And so you want to choose who those people are carefully, right? And I'm not choosing people who are trying to do conventional things. Yeah, yeah. without a doubt. Right. Matter of fact, the one guy that you work for, Nathan Merville, yeah, yeah, right. he's a yes guy and he's doing some of the crazy stuff. Nathan's yeah, world class at, at uh, taking on things in an unconventional way. So if you can hack anything yeah. today, and let's just say finances weren't yeah. an issue, in some ways it's not for you. Yeah, what right. What would you like to go after? You get the whole planet to help you out right. and hack something. What would it be? Well, the, um, you know, the, the single biggest problem I've ever found is energy. Energy. Right. And so you know, when we took on energy, we tried to figure out you know, how to advance some of these alternative energy ideas like, like wind and solar and, and figure out how to scale them. Um, but we couldn't make the math work, right? We never could figure out um, how to get the, to meet demand. And so what a lot of times happens, and, and a lot of people say we're gonna get there. They show a curve for, you know, here's how much energy we use today, you add a few percent a year and you get a growth curve. And they say, if you put solar panels all over Nevada, we're gonna power- Which we're seeing. Know, which we're seeing people try to do. But it's a red herring, right? The real goal is to give every human on earth as much energy as we give an American. And right now, I get about 11 times as much energy as everyone else on earth, right? We're not gonna get there with wind and solar until we get the miracle breakthrough we need in energy storage and things like that. Now you've learned to manipulate energy. I know you're working with wireless power. You're taking yeah, a lot of true. ideas that have been floating around yeah. for a while. Yeah. So you, you've you found new constructs for well, the energy. First, the first one we had to do was figure out how to make enough. And so we invented a new type of nuclear reactor that's powered by nuclear waste. Right. This is a project with Bill Gates. You yeah. guys have been working on Bill Gates is chairman of the company. We've been working on it over a decade. We have a deal to make a test core in China in the mid-2020s. Um, and it's going great. And that's a reactor that's essentially a nuclear waste recycling machine that also makes a bunch of energy. It takes all the half-lives and turns it into yeah. opportunity. So last thing before we go yeah. real quick, if you can suggest yeah. a way to head down the path of being a hacker, right? okay? Yeah. What would you suggest someone have to do? Is it well, read I think something, watch I something? Honestly, no, I honestly think step one is to devote yourself to things you're interested in. And that's it. Your brain is optimized to learn things you're interested in. If you're interested, you can spend all day on it. And I was always, I just always steered towards what I was, to the most interesting thing I could. And, and I'm that still is, doing that. And you're doing it from now on. That's it. That's yeah. life for you. Yeah. Pablo, thanks a lot for hanging out hey, with us. my pleasure. We got a lot more to talk about. This is The Voice of Disruption. We'll be right back.